This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. Anything God does for us, we should use it for other people. I'm going to say that again. Forgiveness from God toward us should lead us to forgive others. Healing from God should lead us to pray for other people to be healed. Prosperity given to us from God should lead us into giving into the lives of other people. What is the main purpose of prosperity? The main purpose of prosperity, it is he that gives you power to get wealth in order that his covenant may be established in the earth. And the covenant today he's given to us is the Great Commission, just before Jesus left here to go into all the world, preach the gospel, and also go into all the world and teach all nations, making disciples of them. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Good morning. Welcome again to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. Today is day number four as we're teaching on the importance of the Word of God. The first two days we took up the importance of the Word of God and growth, maturity, becoming a disciple of the Lord, helping you to resist sin and also there to help whenever we do sin that we can have forgiveness from the Father. So the Word of God is important in the daily walk with God. And so the and anyway, yesterday and today we're taking up the importance of the Word of God in prayer that the, uh, the most valuable thing we have in prayer is the importance of the fact that we can take the Word of God and apply it to it. And the Word of God and prayer simply come together. It's like the presence of the Holy Spirit coming together with the presence of the Word of God because what guides our prayers is the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when we pray that we should pray to the Father, in the name of Jesus, and of course, empowered by the Holy Spirit, meaning we're in fellowship with God. There is no sins in our life, and we are praying to God, expecting him to answer our prayer. And so again, the word of God tells us about that. And yesterday, we left off with the importance of prayer, and also that there are times we don't know what to pray as we ought. In other words, God has answers for us when we know how to pray and when we don't know how to pray. And so this is what we found out. When we know how to pray, the best type of prayer you can pray is the Word of God. The most powerful prayer you can pray is praying the Word of God. Paul did this with the Ephesians. In uh, chapter 3, he had this wonderful, incredible prayer that he prayed for them, but it was a mixture of the Word of God formed into his prayer that they may grow in the righteousness of God. He mentioned scriptural things that he wanted them to do. And again, that's the importance of the Word of God. To pray the Word over somebody is the most powerful prayer. But the second thing is that people often say, well, no, praying in tongues is because it's the most powerful prayer. No, the purpose of praying in tongues is to edify us, build us up, but also is when we don't know for what to pray as we ought. We went to a verse of scripture yesterday, ended the broadcast with this verse, and I want to go back to it. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 tells us that the word instructs us on how to pray when we don't know how to pray. Romans 8, 26 says, we know uh, not what we should pray for as we should, but the Holy Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. The whole verse is talking about the importance of praying in tongues. And Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit and I'll pray with the understanding. Oftentimes we don't know how to pray. We don't have an understanding of the situation, how this thing developed, who started this mess out there that's come against me, how many people have joined him, who are the people that have joined, what am I supposed to do? So again, the uh, what we do is we begin to pray in tongues because we don't know what to pray for as we ought. If I know what's going on, I have scripture to direct my prayer. I have spiritual authority found in the scripture on how to pray that prayer. But when I don't even know where to begin, something has happened that, listen, it's so far away from me right now. I mean, this was a shock. I mean, we've all been surprised. There's been times I've been totally surprised by what people can do. And so again, we I learned to pray in the spirit. By praying in the spirit, First of all, it brings calmness to me. Uh, Isaiah chapter 28 says, when we pray in unknown tongues, it brings refreshing and it brings rest to us. I'm so agitated. I do not have refreshing. I do not have rest. I'm upset by what I'm hearing. Praying in tongues helps to settle me down and it brings refreshing to me where I need refreshing. And most of all, again, it brings a peace inside of me, a rest on the inside of me that I didn't have before. 
So again, this passage was written by Paul, the smartest man in the New Testament. And we need to understand that even Paul himself said, there's times I don't even know where to begin in prayer. There's times when Paul was shocked by the fact that the uh, Jews were, were plotting against him, wanted to kill him. There's times that Paul was totally shocked when he found out Christians were working behind his back. And he brought this out at the end of 2 Timothy. He was closing out that epistle. He talked about, this one has forsaken me. This one turned against me. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. He said, the Lord repay him for all the things he has done against me. He knew how to turn people over the Lord. But man, there were things he brought out that he was not expecting in life. And really he said, when I went to, when I went to, uh, to trial, no one stood with me except for you, Timothy. You were the faithful one to stand with me. And of course, Timothy remained faithful to Paul through the years. So the limitations of the human mind and even the written word are overcome by praying in the spirit. You say, well, there's limitations in the word? Yes, exactly. And the limitations of the word of God is it can give general guidance for everybody, but it can't give specific guidance to you. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. We have the word and the spirit who always agree. The word can tell us what to do. If you can find in the word of God, pray that. But when you can't find the word of God and you're stuck in a situation where there is no scripture, then pray in the spirit. I compared it yesterday to going for a job. Does the Bible say you're supposed to have a job? Yes, but it doesn't tell you which company to go to work for. So the fact I'm depending on God to find me a job is found in the word of God. And God said he wants me to work because if I don't, I'm worse than an infidel. And so I'm worse than a sinner because even sinners know they're supposed to have a job and supply for their children. It takes a dumb Christian to think he can sit down, not work, and God's going to rain down manna out of heaven. God is not going to do that. He told us to go to work. But on the other hand, which job I'm supposed to have can't be found in the word of God. I mean, there's no place in here for AT&T. There's no place in here saying go to work for Walmart. There's no place in here saying go to work for, you know, some other corporation, Apple or whatever. No, that's not found in there. I need to pray in the spirit for the Holy Spirit to direct me is to which job I'm supposed to have. That's how God and the Holy Spirit work together. That's how the word and praying in tongues work together in my life. And so I pray in tongues and God begins to lead me, guide me and direct me. That's the power of praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. And of course, the limitations of the human mind, even the word of God are overcome by praying in the spirit. We need to ask the Lord as his disciples did, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because again, there's two parts to prayer. There's the word and then there's praying in the spirit to depend on the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit to direct me. The word teaches us that we can have an assurity that our prayer will be answered. This assurity is another word for simple faith. That's what the Lord is telling us. Let me just say this, you know, whether we know how to pray, we can pray the word of God, we need to expect an answer. When we pray in tongues, we need to expect an answer. The answer for this one is the answer to my prayer for a specific situation. The answer to this one is, Lord, as I'm praying in tongues, show me, reveal to me, and I'm depending on you to be faithful and show me through the Holy Spirit what's going on in this situation. So, And then give me some scripture. Give me some understanding where I can directly take that to you in prayer and then pray the most powerful prayer found in the word of God to pray according to your will. Right now, I don't know what your will is except to get me out of this mess. But Lord, I don't know who started it. I don't know what what effect it's had. I need you to help me. And he will. So the word of God teaches us, again, an assurity in prayer. We need to go to the Lord in prayer, not begging for an answer, but praying in faith, knowing he will answer. You say, well, if God knows he's going to answer, why do I have to pray? Because prayer is my part of receiving his answer. He will not cram answers down my throat. He knows what he's going to do. He's waiting for me in prayer to simply come to him in faith. And faith is my empty hand reaching out to God's full hand, full of all things that pertain to life and God. The moment I reach out, I'm receiving the answer from him. I may not know it at the moment, but by the time I say amen, I know the answer is there. It'll take some time to manifest and time might be five minutes from now, five days from now, five months from now. But in the meantime, I'm going to walk in patience. I have need of patience that after I have done the will of God, that's praying, I might receive the answer. Again, the time period between those two could be spread out, but I really don't care. I come to the point finally at the end where I say, Lord, if you don't answer this thing for 10 years, at the end of 10 years, I'm still going to be saying that answer may come today. That's the type of faith God is looking for. Then I can go about my business, witnessing to people, all this because I have put that thing on a shelf. It's over. God's answer will come. He promised me that it would. Matthew chapter seven and verse seven says this, ask and it shall be given you. Look what a simple phrase, ask. 
that you do it and it'll be given to you. That's God. Ask is my faith and it shall be given to you as God's grace, reaching out with a handful and you just take from his hand. That 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 Michelangelo picture, you know, of the, of the finger from heaven, the finger from earth, really the best thing according to the word of God would be a hand on earth and a hand in heaven and God's hand is filled with treasures from heaven and we just simply reach out and take it. So again, Matthew chapter seven and verse seven says, ask and it shall be given to you. This is not rocket science. It's simply putting your mind to the side, putting your human logic to the side, putting your human reasoning to the side. Often, there's a, there's a man on my block and he was sick and, and, and had cancer. And I met him one day on the street as I was, I was got out in my front yard, he was walking around the block and he came to me and he said, uh, you're a minister. I said, yeah, he said, I, I'm not doing well. The doctors give me a bad report. I said, do you believe in healing? He says, yeah. And it's more like, I, I, you know, I, I know God can do that. It's in the Bible. I said, tell you what, I'm going to pray for your healing. And I'm going to ask you to do one thing for me. Totally, totally turn your brain off. Just don't think about this. Do not try to reason through this prayer because that's the worst enemy is one trying to reason. We need to cast down reasonings. Don't reason with God. Don't come to him with human viewpoint. You simply push that out of the way and you just simply approach God this way. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to receive. And I said, all I want you to do is wipe your mind clean right now. Do not think about what I'm praying. I want you to close your eyes and just simply listen and receive it. Don't question it, just receive it. He said, okay, I can do that. He closed his eyes and I prayed for him. I cursed cancer. He'd probably never heard a prayer like that. I think he's Church of Christ. He'd never heard a prayer like that. And so in praying that, by the time I got through, I said, Cancer, you are cursed in Jesus' name. You die, you dry up, and you wither, and you leave this man's body in Jesus' name. He came back to me a few days later after going to the doctor. It was totally gone. It wasn't even there. And later on, he got another attack from some other, and I prayed for him again, and it was gone. And I mean, when he sees me, he goes, hey, that stuff worked, you know? And I got him books on divine healing because he's a Christian. And so now he's growing in those things. Again, it comes back to it. We sometimes just need to turn and turn our brain off in doing that. Faith is not totally reasoning with God. I mean, God will deal with our reasonings, but really we come to the end of that and we finally say, okay, Lord, I just receive it. I'll take it. Right now, I turn off all my human reasoning, all the things I can think in my mind on how it won't work. I just stop thinking about that. You promised that if I would ask, you would give it to me. So I simply come back to this at the end of this broadcast. How about you? What are you doing? You know, at the end of this half of this broadcast, what are you doing? Are you trusting God or are you arguing with God? Are you looking at all the reasons why it won't work and then kind of hoping God will come through or just saying, well, Lord, I, I really trust you'll do it, but I don't know if you will or not. No, that's doubt and unbelief. And the Bible says if you're, if you're found in doubt, that man will not receive anything from the Lord. Simply do this, throw all that other stuff away and just simply say, Lord, you said it. I don't know how it's gonna come to pass, but it's not up to me to figure out how it's gonna come to pass. I simply choose right now through a simple prayer to receive the answer from you, then I'm gonna go on my way and trust that you're going to bring it to pass. That's the kind of simple faith God is looking for, full trust in him. And I wanna to say too, just before we go to the, to the uh, break here, if you're a partner with me, thank you. But if you're not a partner with me, would you become one? Simply to say to me, Pastor Bob, I love this broadcast. I love this word. You know what? I've been receiving from it, but I haven't even offered a thank you. I wanna say thank you, but I also wanna send an offering to demonstrate the fact that I thank you. And that offering will be used to put more of these broadcasts out, touch more people's lives, and you'll get to meet them in heaven in eternity. I'll see you right after the break. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Without the Word of God, our lives would be unstable and without direction. There would be no hope for believers or, for that matter, the entire world. In this seven-part series, Pastor Bob Yandian emphasizes and explains the vital necessity of the Word of God in the life of every believer. Sermon titles include A More Sure Word of Prophecy, The Inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God's Reputation, The Wisdom of God's Word, The Merchandise of Wisdom, Wisdom, Riches, and Honor, and Jesus, Our Wisdom. To order Importance of the Word, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed 
or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Pastors, if you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite. Let's get back to what we were talking about. That is the fact the word teaches that we have an assurity of answered prayer. The verse we began with was Matthew chapter seven and verse seven. It said, ask and it shall be given you. That means if you ask according to the word of God, it'll be given to you. If you don't know for what to pray as you ought and you pray in tongues, the answer will come to you. I like to think of it this way. If you don't know for what to pray as you ought by praying in tongues, that's a prequel to the prayer of faith. The prequel simply means I'm praying right now in tongues. Lord, you show me how to pray. You show me some situations going on behind what's going on. For if I know not for what to pray as I ought, I'll pray in tongues, pray in the spirit. So you, but you trust God as much in that prayer that he's gonna answer and then give you the answer on how to pray. And so that's what happens. This is the prequel to praying the prayer of faith. And once you receive the answer there, then go to God and say, Lord, this is what you showed me. I pray in faith over this situation. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. And you quit meddling and muddling around with, I wonder what God's doing. I wonder if this guy, oh, I don't know what's happening. The point of it is you don't have to understand what's happening. God is going to meet your need and meet it exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Once it's in God's hands, don't pull it back by worrying, trying to figure it out, human reasoning, stop all that and simply leave it in God's hands, go on your way, do your job as a Christian, do your job as a father, a mother, whatever it may be, and do that and simply expect God's gonna bring the answer to you at the right time. And in the meantime, God's working behind the scenes. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, that's praying, that you may see the, the problem or the, you may see the promise come to pass in your life. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, again, tells us the importance of faith in our praying. If two will agree on anything, on earth as touching anything, they shall ask, it shall be done from them of my Father, which is in heaven. Sometimes it's nice to have a prayer partner where two can come together and agree. The word agree, symphoneo in the Greek, where we get the word symphony, doesn't mean you have to both pray exactly the same prayer. You both come in tune with each other and you pray, but the, the main thing about what you agree on is that answer is going to come. That's the agreement you have there. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Whatever things you desire when you pray, Believe you receive them and you'll have them. Believe that you receive them is actually past tense. Believe that you have received them. I believed I received it the moment that I prayed. In other words, if I'm praying for an object, you know, and I, the moment I say amen, I reach out by faith and take that object. I don't have it yet as far as the natural is concerned, but in the spirit realm, I have accepted it. I know that between the time I accepted it spiritually, I'm going to see it manifest naturally in front of me. And whether that be finances or a divine healing, it may be a, I need a car because the one I've got's a total mess and Lord, I don't have the money for it right now. You're gonna have to arrange this. All I'm saying for is no matter how impossible it may seem, casting down human reasonings and every imagination that comes against the things of God. That's what I'm supposed to do is cast that down and walk in simple faith. 1 John 5, 14 says this, this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything, boy, think of that, anything, anything, According to his will, that means you can't ask for sinful things. You have to ask it according to his will. That's the word of God or the leading of the Holy Spirit by praying in tongues. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know we have the petition that we desired of him. Am I praying according to the will of God? Well, I found it in the word of God. That's according to the will of God. Uh, I, the Holy Spirit told me, well, then that's the will of God. When you pray that way, then you can be assured that God has heard you. It says, this is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, we have the petition we desire of him. It's coming back to the simplicity again of our prayer. And that is the word of God mixed with our prayer forms the highest form of prayer we can have. Prayer mingled with the word of God. Prayer mingled with the will of God and whether that will of God comes from the word or else it comes by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we have the perfect prayer we are praying to God and God says that's the type of prayer I'm looking for. So the word teaches us the goal of prayer. What is the goal of a prayer? Well, James chapter four and verse three tells us, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that may, you may consume it on your own lusts. In other words, if I'm praying for something in my life, 
I don't want to consume it on my own lust. Here's the point. You say, yeah, but if I ask for money, what if I do consume it on my own lust? You should desire finances to, first of all, bless the kingdom of God, as well as increase the amount of food you can buy and the necessities of life and the blessings of life. It's okay to have those things as long as you don't heap them on yourself. Your first desire in prayer. You know what? It's told us in the book of Ephesians that uh, the first job you get, it says, let him that stole steal no more. In other words, if you're living your life through and you're sponging off other people and you keep thinking that's God's will for your life, you're actually stealing from other people. You should have a job. It said, let him go and work with his hands. That the word there, uh, manos, is what, you know, that's, that's the, the Spanish word for hands, but it's also mingled in with the uh, Greek word for hands. We get manual labor from that. You start off with manual labor. You don't start out making much money, but the first thing you do is you have that. It says that he may have to give. The first reason you even go get a job is not to pr provide you for yourself, but so you'll have an avenue to bless. I do not go to my job to get paid. I go to my job to get seed. And seed is what I scatter out there. This is only a source for seed at the moment. God's going to begin to bless me as I begin to sow these other things. What I put on the table will not come back to me. What I put in my pocketbook won't come back to me. He multiplies seed sown, not seed kept, not seed in my wallet, not seed in the bank. It's the seed that I sow out there that God brings back to me. And you'll begin to find out what true prosperity is. True prosperity is given to a person who puts others above himself. The will of God, the, the, the blessings for people around him, this is what God is looking for. And that's what that scripture means. You ask amiss because you pray to consume it on your own lust. And God will not answer because consuming it on your own lust is sin. God will not answer a prayer that is back with a sinful attitude or a sinful desire. Next of all, in Psalm 19 and verse 12, we have the need for the help of the Holy Spirit in our prayer to reveal the hidden problems in our life or to show us the spiritual ways to pray. Psalm 19, 12, cleanse my heart from secret faults. We should ask the Holy Spirit, when I go into prayer, would you reveal anything in me? Show me things that are wrong in my life that I can clean up before I go to the Lord in prayer. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, David says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. While he was praying, he says, Lord, I don't want to get this prayer answered and find myself out of your will and suddenly looking at the wrong motives. Keep my motives correct. Show me while I'm walking the things that are wrong in me. And if there's things wrong in me, I'll be so quick to confess it. Because if I confess my sin, you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, I want to stay current on that. So if there's things I'm missing, show me things that are wrong in my life. Psalm 51 and verse six, behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts, you shall make known unto me your wisdom. The greatest use of prayer is to be a blessing to other people. This is why God left us here. He didn't leave us here just to exist and just have a nice house. He left us here to be witnesses, to fulfill the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is not only fulfilled by, by preaching to others and teaching to others, but by giving to others. And that's what our prayers are for. Lord, bless me so that I can be a blessing. You know why God blessed Abraham? It says back there in Genesis, it said, because God knew he would be a blessing. Even though Abraham at the time when he started may not have had much, he, all, Abraham had this attitude, what little I have, I'm going to keep giving some of it to the lives of other people. God said, that's what I'm looking for. I will bless a blesser. I will give to a giver. And you may be giving nothing in the beginning except maybe a little bit of your time because you don't have any money in your pocket. God said, I'll bless that one. And that's the type of person I will greatly bless. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31 says this, Whatever you do, do all in the name of the glory of God. So forgiveness should lead us into forgiving others. Anything God does for us, we should use it for other people. I'm going to say that again. Forgiveness from God toward us should lead us to forgive others. Healing from God should lead us to pray for other people to be healed. Prosperity given to us from God should lead us into giving into the lives of other people. What is the main purpose of prosperity? The main purpose of prosperity, it is he that gives you power to get wealth in order that his covenant may be established in the earth. And the covenant today he's given to us is the great commission just before Jesus left here to go into all the world, preach the gospel, and also go into all the world and teach all nations, making disciples of them. The two major divisions of the, of the, uh, 
Great Commission are given to us to be a blessing to others, not to heap on ourselves. He left us here to lead others to the Lord and to teach them and make them into disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the Father of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation in order that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort by which we ourselves are comforted of God. Twice he said in that verse of scripture, God gives to us for us to give to others. And God will always see when we give to others, we always have more left over for ourselves. But the main reason why God blesses us is because we choose to bless other people. It comes back to that. Look at Abraham, how blessed he was in his life. Even when his nephew Lot was living in sin, even when uh, Lot was looking toward uh, Sodom and all that, he still said to him, here's all the land I have. You choose the one you want. And you know what? Lot chose out of his own lusts. He looked at this and said, that's the best looking. I want the best. And he took the best. And Abraham said, fine, you take the best. But you know what? God turned around and blessed Abraham even further. By the time that Abraham died, he was wealthy beyond anybody's imagination. Why? Because he thought of others first, was not afraid to even give the better portion to somebody else, knowing that God had more better portions out there for him also. The word teaches us to recognize different types of prayers. There's supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks, all found in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 15, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. Some of God's promises are general rather than specific. Some are conditional. Others are unconditional. Some are fulfilled in this life. Others will not be fulfilled until we get to heaven. But the point of it is the word of God helps us to discern the different types of prayer. So does the Holy Spirit. And we recognize there's different types of prayer found in the word of God. The word teaches us our position in prayer. God is powerful. In ourselves, we are powerless. Arrogance has no place in prayer. We come before God in complete submission to him. I like the way that Abraham prayed in the Old Testament. I am but dust and ashes. When he approached the Lord in prayer, and here even we as believers can say the same thing. In my natural self, I'm but dust and ashes. I need your help and your power every day. Even Jesus prayed, nevertheless, not as I will, but as your will be done. Hebrews 4, 6, we are to come boldly before the throne of grace. Hebrews 10, 22, let us draw near with a true heart. Zephaniah 2, 3, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. It comes back to it. It's not so much the prayer that's important. It's the attitude behind the prayer of submission, total trust, totally leaning on God and doing it to be a blessing to other people. We'll see you tomorrow as we continue on this particular subject of which I would like for you to get this CD series on the importance of the word. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.